Hey, this is Brent Arnold, and today I want to talk about developing mobile apps for iOS using Flash Professional CS 5.5. So you've already downloaded it and installed it. You've already checked out the About Flash page. Look for my name, it's in there. Uh, and you're ready to get started. Go ahead and choose Air for iOS. And this is going to start out with kind of a default template. And notice over here we've got some settings. We've got the frames per second. Uh, you can change this, of course. You can set it to whatever you like. Um, this is just kind of recommended. You don't have to do it. The size, notice 320 by 480. That's really set up for iPhone development. If you want to target the iPad, go ahead and change this so you can set it to like 1024 by 768. Um, and then also this reflects the initial orientation. So we're setting this up in portrait, as you can see. And if you wanted landscape, you would switch these values, right? So keep that in mind. For now, let's go ahead and add some movie clips to the stage, some buttons. And we want to go ahead and just click the square tool, uh, select that. We've got a fill color, no line. And we're going to click and drag. Go ahead and press the letter V on the keyboard and select that. Press F8. And let's call this square. All right, we want to give this an instance name. This allows us to reference the uh, object on the stage in code and go ahead and click there we kind of put it wherever you'd like and let's select here now I know you can't see this but off screen here just go ahead and choose like polystar tool might as well change the color I like blue and whoops oh 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 oh, oh. just pick something press V move it around press F8 again and we're going to call this Polygon. Click OK. Again, these are set as buttons because we want the button behavior on these objects. Let's give this an instance name. We're going to call this Polygon. Very inventive, don't you think? OK. At this point, let's save our document. Go ahead and choose Save. And I've got a folder here. And we, we can just call this Simple iOS App. Go ahead and press Save. Okay, in order for this to give us some events, we want to make these buttons clickable. We need to create a document class. Go ahead and click Edit Class Definition. Notice here it says, do you want to open this in Flash Professional or Flash Builder? There's a great round tripping uh, workflow between Flash Professional and Flash Builder. I'm not going to show that right now, but that's what that would be for. If you have Flash Builder 4.5, it, it makes a great round tripping. Go ahead and give this a class name. We're going to call this, I like to call it the same as the uh, FLA just to keep it straight so we know that that is the document class. Now at this point, we want to save this before we forget. Go ahead and choose Save. And it'll give us the name. And go ahead. Now. Remember over here in the FLA, we've given these instance names of square and polygon. So in our code, we want to reference those. And I like to, uh, I like to call things in an init function. I don't like to put things in the instructor unless I'm passing in uh, values to the constructor. So at this point, we'll just call this function init. And then below this curly brace, we want to create this function. So we're going to call it private function init and it has no return type uh, void so it doesn't return anything now we want to reference those buttons so we say square dot and we're going to add event listener and the event listener we want to listen for the mouse event and go ahead and press control space at this point and notice we have that option and go ahead and select that what it does is it imports that for us. And the type is a click event. And then we'll call a function, let's say handle, uh, I like to say handle button clicks. And let's do the same thing for the polygon. Whoops, add event listener, mouse event dot click, and the same function. Now you're saying to yourself, self, why 
but I use mouse events when I'm on a touch screen device? Well, there's a number of reasons, and one is the mouse event gives you the basic uh, interactions that the touch events do. The touch events obviously add more capabilities like determining multi-touch and touch point IDs, things like that. Uh, at this point, we're just having a simple interaction of pressing a button. When, when we release the button, we want to get that event. And so the mouse event will be dispatched. Now, the other reason why I tend to like to use uh, mouse events for simple interactions is that you can then debug and test this on the desktop on your computer and you'll get those mouse events, right? If you set it to touch events, uh, the ADL does not emulate touch events and so that becomes uh, more of a hassle. But for this little app, it's very simple, very straightforward. Okay, below here we want to create another function. So we'll say private function and it's the handle button clicks, right? And we're going to receive an event. It's typed as a mouse event. And it doesn't return anything. All right, inside here, we're going to do a trace statement so that we can see that something happened. And we'll say you clicked the, and then a plus, and we're going to say event. We want current target dot name, and that will give us uh, the instance name of the object. So go ahead and save that. Click over to the FLA. Uh, we can go ahead and save this. Now at this point, we can go ahead and debug I'm so, and or test the movie. Now if you're familiar with Flash, you can always do the control enter or command return. Uh, you know, we're doing this test movie and by default it's, it's set up for uh, debug launcher mobile for these iOS template. So go ahead and do that. And what happens is it will launch the ADL. And now we have our little uh, buttons. So if I click them, notice how it says, hey, you click the square, I click this one. Hey, look at that, you clicked the polygon. All right. Now this is all well and good, but you came here for the real deal. You want to put this on your device. So uh, before we get to that tutorial, make sure you have an Apple developer account. Make sure it's for iOS. Uh, the Mac developer account will not work for iOS. It's a totally different thing. Uh, make sure you've watched those other tutorials so you can create your developer certificate and your mobile provisioning profile and you've got your app, I'm sorry, your app ID and your device UDIDs in there. Otherwise, this next tutorial won't do you any good. So make sure you hop on over and get it done.